think like many of you, I was so excited by Baldo on Nintendo Switch. It just looked perfect. Everything about the visual style with that Studio Ghibli look to hopefully something that was more akin to a classic Zelda with a bit of open world shenanigans thrown in. Unfortunately, the longer I've played, the more fundamental issues have arisen. In this video, we're going to go over those and I'll split them up into system, combat, movement, visuals, and quite a few of you helped me out in the community post with some gripes that you've had, so I'll make sure to include some of those at the end. I've got to be honest, I do think there is still something here and there's still something to love in Baldo, but as I put it on the community post, this is like someone who has worked out only upper body and forsaken legs their entire life. A very unbalanced and a little bit embarrassing experience. Why? Well, let's find out. I'd love to have included some of the latter information about the game. The saving. I lost over 10 hours of gameplay when silly old me assumed that auto-saving has been a thing for the last 20 years, and if I go to play another game and come back, surely it will have checkpointed at some stage in the game. Oh, uh, no. You'll just be greeted with a blank space where your save file should be, and a nice little prompt to begin the game again. This is absolutely ridiculous, and I thought it was maybe something I did wrong, but then I heard quite a few of you say the same thing. Then we've got the UI. Now I don't have a real problem with the UI design, I like it being minimalist, but if you are going to have key elements on screen, you need to make them legible. The first of these is the stamina wheel, which is over there, and you just can't really see it. There's a reason why in Breath of the Wild this is put above the character when it's in use. It's because your eye will actually notice how much stamina you've got. What it leads to when playing here is constantly running out of stamina, not really managing it, but being frustrated that it's not there. Other elements of the UI are okay, like the map in the bottom left hand corner of the screen, but that should also have an ability to toggle and zoom in closer so you can see details. And then while we're on the top, topic of the mapping system, it is absolutely crap. You can press start and look at the map over here, press X to make it full screen, but you can't zoom in. There's no close up map to give you details about the different areas in town. It might say to you, you need to go and visit the bakery. In any other game you've played or an RPG, you'd have a very close town map and you'd, th you'd think, okay, I can go up and left and down. That'll take me where I need to go. Here, every screen, every area feels like a maze because the mapping is so bad. And it's one area that just shouldn't be a chore. There should be a one button press from when you're playing the game that takes you to a map that's either overview or zoomed in, and then you can toggle between the two. So developers, just, just work on a map, please. Work on the mapping system. Give us those regional and area town maps and uh, your game will instantly be less frustrating. Now, thankfully, there is the pulsating blue thing that shows you where you are. Again, maybe a little green triangle that's directional as well so you can see which way you're facing. That would be useful. I just don't really know how the game got to this stage without the fundamentals of a good mapping system. But you know, 15 years isn't that much time. <laughs> then we've got the quest log. Now, I don't really have a huge problem with the look of the quest log. It's a log full of quests, a huge number of which will come splashing into your lap very early on in the game. But I'll tell you what I do want. I want the ability to set an active quest, and then that shows on my mini-map so I know exactly where I'm going. Once again, quite standard for a modern title, but it's not in all games, so, you know, take it or leave it. It's just poorly designed in general. It feels like every area is a maze and not the enjoyable family friendly Kew Gardens type. The frustrating walk around the edge of the map to just get from A to B type constantly checking that and sincerely hoping the waypoint system gets fixed. In the game's defense, they do add a fast travel system, but there aren't enough points to fast travel to. And if you haven't bought the map for that area, well, you're out of luck load times. Now I said in my review, well in the performance review, that load times were generally okay but there were some areas where they were astronomically long and I've just found more and more of those and they just seem to randomly occur. Sometimes you'll leave a cave and your load time can be a minute, minute and a half long. It could be really frustrating. There are many bugs and glitches in terms of the visuals and performance but one of the most irritating other than glitching through the floor is the missing items. I've heard of many people that have had key items in the game just disappear or just not be there and yeah that's not okay. So that's one down. Next up we have combat. I know combat's an area that many of us have struggled massively with and it's not struggled in the Dark Souls sense of the word where you're learning the attack patterns of the enemies, gradually figuring it out and countering in all the right ways. This is struggling in the sense that the enemies lock onto you and then can kill you with a single move. Why is that a thing? It goes for every enemy in the game. If you watch closely, you'll notice even if you roll out of the way, they're still tracking you. It's completely unfair. They'll have fired off that move and it will follow you as you move around. 
It's a very rudimentary system and you can almost see the coding behind it, but man is it annoying. This will then lead to many, many deaths where you'll have to watch a brief loading screen and it might take you all the way back to a start area in a map and the frustration will become part of your experience very early on. Despite it sounding like a terrible pun, the hit zones are also hit and miss. Sometimes you'll swing that sword, which seems to have a fair amount of input latency in it and it will connect and it will do damage. Other times the enemy will completely block everything you do and then annihilate you with a single touch, but then occasionally you'll get the upper hand roll behind them, do the damage and overcome them, but usually by taking some damage and also knowing that at any point they could one shot you or they can lock you so that you can't actually attack back and they'll kill you eventually. Yeah, it's very disappointing. I've gotta be honest, I ended up just running away. It was pointless anyway. I wouldn't even mind the combat being that difficult if they took off the damage. So let's say it does half a heart's damage when you get hit, they reduce that lock on because that's just silly it doesn't work and then they gave the player more ability to heal the reason that dark souls works so well is because you have those estus flasks you can heal yourself as you go along it's quite a simple mechanic to do that and it feels fair it's when it feels unfair that a game is just poorly designed in that area next up we've got movement and control now movement isn't bad on the surface you can move bold or around at a walking pace or you can sprint around however certain aspects of the way you move are really annoying there's the drop death which is so badly implemented we all play games and you kind of get this gamification there is actually a known thing where you can get someone that's never played a game someone that has and there are certain things we take for granted we know that if that drop is so steep we can't see the bottom of it it's going to kill us but if we can see the bottom of it and it's also an area we can run to by going around the edge we generally assume as gamers and this, with that gamification that we'll be able to drop down we might take some damage because it's a little bit high but it's not going to kill us and it's certainly not going to give us a game over screen but unfortunately baldo messes with that assumption by constantly killing you even when you drop to an area you've just been it's silly and it's obviously there because there are some puzzles that require you not to go in certain places but then perhaps they struggle to code that into these other areas but is it that hard really man i don't know but it's so annoying and it became one of my biggest bugbears when you tie that with the next point no ability to jump now zelda you could move to the edge and it would automatically jump that was then seen in a few other copies cat games it works well and it means that some of the puzzles could involve well jumping but in baldo unless it comes after 20 hours in the game there's no jumping it's bizarre and then you combine it with some other elements that can make it feel a bit like your time's being wasted in some areas if you've played the game there's a start area where you have to go into like a rice paddy field but rather than having just a slope letting you go down and talk to the lady there it makes you walk up three screens worth of field and then come all the way back really slowly through the water and you're just like why are you doing this <laughs> like what is the motivation from a game design perspective for making you do that is it they just want to see these boring rice paddies that they've made or is it to slow you down i just there are lots of things like that that just don't make any sense and this next one's more of a pet peeve but it comes with the territory and it's the block pushing like honestly if i can't push it I don't want to see the push thing come up on screen. <laughs> that might just me, be me, but I don't want to see it because it's so annoying and it makes it feel like trial and error when you do end up pushing just everything in sight. It's like you walk up to a, a brick wall and you stand there just pushing against it, hoping for something to happen. Okay, the final area then, we've got the visuals and on the surface, they're definitely the strongest aspect of Baldo. There's the Studio Ghibli look. They, they're nice, it runs okay, although I've noticed more and more performance issues issues as I've gone on and the characters well they're a bit marmite some people love them some people hate them I'm somewhere in the middle the animations are a tiny bit odd I'm not gonna lie but I can I can get past that things I can't get past at the moment are the text size text size on the speech is fine ish although some of the translation leaves a lot to be desired it's the text size in any of the menus it's just rubbish it's too small you can't read it you got to get too close to the screen and yeah not not good at all next on visuals in terms of gripes that i have are the camera controls you've got this lovely 3d world you also have stealth sections and puzzles where you may have to get something that's behind a tree or off screen and you can't see it even if it's a four axis rotation i'll take that that's that's better than this and then when you die from an enemy that you can't see eesh. yeah 
camera controls. I'm going to finish up then with a few of your comments on the community post and it seems that quite a few of you firstly have actually managed to get refunds on it which is certainly not a good look for the developer. Sean Miller says his biggest gripe is having to leave rooms and come back in to restart puzzles. Yeah that is annoying. It is something we've seen in a few games though but it is yeah it's not a great idea. Quite a few of you have pointed out that the core game design feels a little bit flawed so usually and a good example would be Mario you're led by the coins and the, the game leads you into learning its skills but in Baldo it doesn't do that it just throws you in and then just kills you hundreds of times there's lots of reference to the mapping system and how bad it is and quite a few of you don't rate that visual style and there seems to also be a general consensus that the controls just aren't great now I have to finish up by saying that every single game has gripes it has issues it has problems Baldo isn't unique for this I think it's because some of them are so fundamental but also quite easy to fix that they can be really frustrating for the player I am still managing to enjoy the game and I have found a way of enjoying what's on offer and there is a lot of good there are some moments that put a big smile on your face it's just a shame that slapped off of it the second you meet any enemies I have hopes for Baldo I don't know if I'd call them high hopes but they are hopes nonetheless let me know in the comments what do you think of it what do you make of it are these fair critiques and you can kind of understand now why the review never materialized because my entire progress got deleted which is a shame make sure you exit out to the main menu because that saves your game uh, Caramba. Thanks to all of you who watch the channel and as always to our patrons you guys support us every month and we really do appreciate it. For all things Switch, all the time, keep it Switch up. Cheers guys, see ya!